So I, I couldn't start the conversation because anyone who follows me or follows the platform knows I always say, if I say the name Leona Mitchell, I'm going to follow it up oh. with, she sings the girls down. When did you discover you had such a gift? a minister and we sang in the church and uh, my, my elder sisters and brothers played all kind of instruments and they would call the musical Mitchell so I was surrounded by you know gospel music and uh, we had all kind of instruments in our home so we were expected to participate and be one of these Mitchells that sang so I, I actually got a lot of training in the church and uh, but not opera I didn't hear my first opera until I was about 16 years old <laughs> See, we came along when it was just starting to be integration. And uh, so a uh, land team like that would have gone to all black schools and Grace, all of them would have been. And I think that's the only reason I became an opera singer because I went to an integrated school. I happened to get with these, this teacher that had wanted to sing opera. What's the name of this teacher? Her name is Maureen Preeby, Maureen Morrow Preeby. But I didn't realize she was so experienced. She had gone to New York to study with this Met singer. But because of her mother, she was an only child, her mother didn't want her to do that. She wanted her to come back and teach school. But no wonder she singled me out because she had heard all the great people sing. And she knew that I had the goods. So she put all of her hope in me. She said, I think you have the voice and I just, would you just go to OCU and audition for me? And so I went to the school and uh, I sang Aida, the last duet in Aida. Uh, she got me to learn that, she taught it to me. And so the uh, music teacher, I know Silberg went out the room. She said, surely she's more than 17. And no, she's 17. And this is her first opera. And so she brought back in the whole music school to hear me because I had no money to go to that school. I was one of 15 children. And um, so she, she told the school, you've got to find a scholarship for her. She's talented. Miss Leona Mitchell, I don't think I've got to say an awful lot about her because she has been singing here for an audition and uh, winning, I believe, everything. Hernani in Volami. By Giuseppe Verdi, the opera Ernani, sung by Leona Mitchell, with Calvin Simmons conducting. Miss Mitchell, looking outstandingly beautiful in a dazzling white gown with feather boa. I went straight from university almost to making my Met debut. It was amazing, and I, uh, and, and most people don't do that. And uh, you know, I don't hardly know anybody that's done that route. So this soprano that was supposed to do this production at the Met canceled. I was remember backstage and I had, and I wasn't with just any cast. I was with Placido Domingo and uh, you know, the top tenor at the time and Regine Crespin. I didn't even get to rehearse with Placido. Uh, he was, because he had already done it. So he, I just rehearsed in a room at the Met. I had never been on the stage. I had never heard the orchestra. I, I just, I mean, and I was just concentrating. And so when I remember Paul, I said, okay, back there. And he said, aren't you afraid? And I said, no, I don't have time. I've got to get out here and do 
<laughs> you know, I was just green and it was wonderful because I didn't have enough sense to be afraid. I was just going to go do my job. I don't know uh, why the critics were even there because I was, you know, that was the second run of things and they didn't, but they came and reviewed me and it was quite a send off. Yeah. So, so then I, I was there for 18 seasons. I didn't know they were always comparing because I didn't always read my reviews with the Leona Leontine. And then we may look similar. I don't know. Yeah. It's a privilege to be even in her presence or say that you're similar, but, um, but it was God's doing because I wasn't one of those singers that sat and studied every note that she sang. big deal they were really trying to push me right in that slot and it was well you can't be I mean it's only one Leontine right <laughs> so that was really difficult and and toward the middle of the career it got really bad it was difficult at the end I realized I think Opera News wrote an article about it that it's a shame that they were always pushing Leona to be you know the next Leontine when I mean, it should have just been Leona you know yeah one of the leading spinto, spinto sopranos in the world at this time and one of the most versatile where are where were the albums where were the <laughs> yeah, albums see, this this was a problem and this is why my name is not a household name because i didn't get those albums at that time a lot of us young ladies were coming in but the men were not and black men. I stepped out and spoke out about the absence of black men in opera. And uh, so I remember my manager was actually crying, Leona, why didn't you say this publicly? Oh my God, it's gonna ruin your career. Because you weren't supposed to speak up. I did one, one recording with Kurt Adler and um, Tobias and you know maybe some, a little Christmas thing with Placido, not much. But um, it, it, it just became, a, I don't know, it seemed to be the way that I thought about it. My husband, who was with me for years, 40 years, uh, we thought about it. And actually, it was somewhat political because, you know, they wanted somebody to come after Leontine, but then they didn't necessarily want it to be a Black woman. <laughs> ended up it worked against me um they just were determined not to record me is a story that I will tell that I, I haven't told. I was in Israel. I, I sang with the Israeli Philharmonic for years and maybe 10 years. Uh, I came synonymous with one of the singers that they always brought back and uh, they came on tour in the United States. It was one of the first times uh, I sang with them in, at the Hollywood Bowl and then New York, he had to cancel. They would not let me come to New York. with the, They didn't want me to be known that way. Isn't that a crazy, but Zubin had to say, well, I can't bring you to New York City. Did you hear me? It's a political crap because 
it's like if they keep you in under wraps, you don't get so big. I it just is is very puzzling, very puzzling. And I remember when uh, my agencies were so kind of upset about the recordings. Uh, I would did my uh, Lincoln Center recital debut and packed and. It, 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 it uh, you know, all the record companies usually come and um, they wouldn't come. They didn't want to hear it. My uh, agent at the time was saying he was so furious. He said they won't even come because they don't, they know it, that, that it'll be what they hear and they don't want to show that they're being whatever they're being, that they're not going to. I was at the top, you know, singing all of these things with Luciano and Placido and all of them and doing, you know, stellar, you know, reviews and all of this and audience and da 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 and still not able to get a recording. Yeah. Amazing. And it was very hurtful to me. It was very damaging to me. I was blacklisted. That's what I'm going to tell you. And, I, and, and you'd have to ask them the total reason. I could only surmise what the reason was. I don't care how you sang, if you had all of this discography, you were famous. <laughs> and so I remember sometimes uh, early on going to parties and people would call me Kathy Battle. And I said, no, I'm Leona Mitchell when she was done. Oh, we don't know who that is, right? So it's, yeah, it was, um, yeah, really, really debilitating and hurtful. And it actually made me question myself. Uh, I went for, uh, I don't think the last 10 years or 15 years, I would have done it if it weren't for my husband. I wouldn't have gone back. I wouldn't keep singing because it was so caustic and, and that element was there where I, I had to always introduce myself to Europe as a whole new person because I didn't have records, you know? <laughs> positive thing about that was it was honest applause matter of fact i just saw the other day my tosca from mexico but i got to actually see me visually do it i had never seen it. and then i got to hear it and the applause at the end was so amazing It's worth everything, I'm sorry about the tear up, but it's worth everything I did to hear that the people, the people loved me like that. I, I just, it's, it, it's worth everything. So I said, oh, so, uh, you know, I did have the goods, but these people just were not going to record me. And it really caused me a lot of angst and anxiety. And if it had been for my husband, I wouldn't have kept singing. And it also showed in some of my singing a little later because because of that, I'd have great nerves. Nobody knew this, but I'd have serious nerves. And then that would make me not sing like I should have. Tonight, Yahweh Ben Yahweh is in a federal prison facility some 60 miles outside New Orleans. The self-proclaimed son of God was arrested on Wednesday, charged with racketeering and giving the orders to kill 14 people. Uh, what, what really made them uh, really get rid of me is uh, the controversy with my elder brother, uh, Yahweh Ben Yahweh. And uh, so that was the ticket to say, oh, those, we don't want these people around us, so.
I was uh, let go to me too soon. It was a woman that called me from, I don't know, American Federation or something, which I, uh, and asked me what I do a recital. And I said, of course, because I wasn't doing anything. I'd just been let go at the Met. I thought, okay, well, I'll do this recital. And then, you know, I had to learn a piece or something that they wanted. And uh, then I get a call back and she says, you know, um, Miss Mitchell, I heard that you're not really singing well. And um, uh, can we just get rid of this contract? Because uh, the, uh, I, don't, I forget which organization, a very high organization in the United States said that you had retired and you're not singing well. And I was furious. And this this was just before the internet took hold and just before all of these videos could show. So I had to scramble with and try to, I was gonna show this woman, I was a height, I was a maybe 43 years old. And I had to show her, I had to find any kind of tapes that I had by my, you know, of my own and send it to this lady to show her that I indeed was singing. to that and I did that performance I'm telling you Malik the angels opened up <laughs> I was gonna show her and by the time I finished that show the whole audience was to my feet to come in just just tell me This was looking so crazy and and but I just had to you know I said oh no and so but then I was so grateful because the internet came on after that because all of these people from these countries were showing my videos and I'm like oh well okay I was so busy Malik I, I travel 300 days a year that's what I did I never stopped I did that for 30 so I did that all the time and uh, these, the ones the opera singers said they have vacations. I didn't know what that was. <laughs> I was just always because I didn't have that discography. I had to always prove myself. early you still had a high c and a d yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what what was the motivation well my husband was my motive i'm telling you if if he were not with me um he even when i was gone from the met i rehearsed he was sitting there on the couch every day he would want me to go through my repertoire singing full voice playing for myself just doing going through the duets of tosca i was just and so i kept my voice in shape you know, it was quite amazing. That's how I kept it in shape to 63, at least 63, 64, because I was doing that every single day. passion that I have for singing, I'm changing it around. I'm putting it into this. I think you've heard me say it last time. I'm putting it, I'm just kind of figuring out how to do it and which things I like the best. But I do like singing like jazz and things like that. So that's what I like right now. Like, for instance, Malik, I'm going to sing it for you right now. And when October goes, the snow begins to fly. Above the stall smoky roofs, I see the plane go by. I like that. Ding the girl. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I like. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> and it's my heart is still in it. So the people still hear me. It's just a whole nother little way. Did you like that? I did. Okay. I did. It was easy to listen to. Make me thrill is only you know how. Sway me so. Sway me now. Make me thrill is only you know how. Sway me so. Sway me now. retiring uh, from the stage you've had a lot of honors but one of the ones that I think is most interesting is the Leona Mitchell Heritage <laughs> Museum yes yes could you talk a little bit about that you know this is this museum is housed at my father's old church and they've redone it up to be a museum but uh he just thought you know I had done so much for Oklahoma and the so he thought, you know, you know, these Mitchells, we've done a lot. He said, I bet we could have a museum. And so my sister in California, Barbara Finley, thought, well, I'm going to make that happen. We used to do Leon Mitchell music camps. And so every year I would, uh, they, they would put on an opera and the little kids would dress up and pretend they were singing it and doing around. And so we did that. We did over at McChen Opera. So, you know, we introduced them to it, the little children or Porgy and Bess and they learn little things at the opera and they at, at the camp that they call music camp so you were about to make your uh... Well, reading to you, or I don't know the proper word, come back to the operatic stage in Emily. Could you talk a little bit about that? Oh, yes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> the bias talked to me into this. <laughs> and he rewrote it for me because it's really contralto tenor. Oh, my God. I kept saying, he kept saying, you can really sing down there. I kept saying, are you sure they're not going to think this is Leon Mitchell? <laughs> It's such a tenor baritone. Sound. It's amazing. And the opera is such a ugh, tearjerker anyway. But uh, yeah, I pay, play on Hannah. And I am looking forward to it because it's totally different. Totally different. I, I think people with, when I come out on stage, people are going to go say, that's not Leona Mitchell. <laughs> Up, what is what are you up to today or do you have anything else you want to see well i'm just you know i'm just thankful for all that you know the career that i had and and you know having been there it's been such a blessing and now i'm just relaxing and just as the kids say chilling with this new music so i'm just ready to get out here and do this little new thing because i do like to perform because i was you know trained that way from a little kid and so it's a part of me i don't need to just close up shop period so that's what i'm aiming for
Thank you so much again. I really Thank appreciate you, it. Thank you, Molly. Thank you so much. God bless you too in your endeavors. All right. Thank you. Okay. I'll talk bye to bye. you later. Okay. Bye-bye.